an LED lamp, and it's our favourite type of LED lamp. It's a failed LED lamp. But I'd like to point out that this Fern Howard lamp, the reason it's failed is because it was using the wrong type of fitting, and it's been uh, driven with too much current. So the letter enclosed it was, Hi Clive, enclosed is the 11 watt Fern Howard 2D LED lamp that I promised to send you. It failed after a couple of weeks use, and as you can see, it is overheated and melted. It says in the lamp, but not in the pictures or description tool station's website, not to be used in 28 or 38 watt fittings. My ceiling lamp fitting doesn't have any wattage written on it anywhere at all. The lamp that I replaced was a 28 watt compact flare tube, so maybe that should have given me a clue as to the fitting's rating, but it's not obvious. The lamp was a straight swap, and I removed the starter. It seems counterintuitive that if you put an LED lamp just too low a wattage into a fitting, for example to save electricity or reduce the amount of light, then you get overheating problems. That is the exact opposite of what happens with incandescent bulbs. So what's happened here is this is a lamp that is designed for use in the compact fluorescent light fittings that have the integrated ballast and either this either can have a separate uh, starter or in the case of this four pin style case, it has the starter in the fitting as well. But these type of lamps often use the existing ballast to limit the current. So in this case, because this has been put, instead of being put into a 16 watt fitting, it's been put into a higher wattage fitting and I'm surprised it actually fitted. I thought they might have had some sort of uh, sizings to keying in some way to stop it going in. But because it's been put into that higher wattage fitting, it's passed higher current in the same way it would have passed higher current through the original tube. And it's basically melted this. So as I say, it's not the, the lamp's fault, it's just been put in the wrong style of fitting, but it makes for a very interesting teardown. To see what's happened and see what circuitry they use, so I've got my slightly shitty spudger here, not my usual ISIS Samuel spudger, which is excellent, and this one is not excellent. This one says, Component Warehouse Superinox. How about super crap? Because that's what it is. It just distorts and mangles. It's just the wrong type of metal. So let's uh, get around here and just prize at this and see if we can pop this out. It should be relatively easy because the plastic has shrunk. I mean, it might not come out easily. If it takes too long, I shall pause to save us uh, the torturous experience of a uh, splintering plastic. But it looks as though it's actually coming out okay. Oh, there's some clips down here. These are the ones that may. These are the ones that actually have survived. So this might be the hardest bit to get out. So I should just keep prizing. Oh, it's one of those annoying ones that as you prize up, prize it up and then prize the other side, it sort of clicks back down again. Let's apply some pressure up like this. If I can get my hand under here, see if we can make it stay up. That's looking promising, that's looking promising. Here we go. So the circuitry, unless there's a lot of stuff on the other side, looks very simple. Let's take this out. Where is a suitable screwdriver? Here is a suitable screwdriver. I'm noting for a start that the circuit board is in four distinct sections. I wonder why that is. Each with two wires. I shall reverse engineer this completely. I shall uh, see what's in the back and if it's super simple, I shall reverse engineer it and draw the schematic. Oh, there's just a rectifier in the back. Okay, right, I'm going to uh, pause momentarily while I trace this out. Oh, look, they've not cropped those wires. It's a bit naughty, but having said that, it's going into plastic housing. Right, I'm going to pause momentarily to draw this out and uh, then we'll see how it works and what's like to have gone wrong. Well, I kind of know what's gone wrong. I would say that the LEDs have been nuked, but um, I'll test these components and see what has and hasn't survived. The reverse engineering has been done, and this is a very, very simple lamp. I was kind of expected a bit more complicated, maybe of some current regulation, but it is entirely relying on live coming through the external choke, the inductor, that limits the current through the original fluorescent tube. And then the way these pins are arranged, you'd then have had the sort of glow starter switch, I'm not even sure. Let's just name starter, put the symbol there, and then it would go to neutral. So the current's limited by this inductor here, and that's why too much current flowed, because it was a fitting designed for a higher power lamp. 
there are resistors going to each of these pins. I'm thinking they're kind of the they're quite low, 1.8 ohm, and I suppose that might be to emulate the heat element at each end to protect the starter or the ballast if something went wrong, if this lamp went open circuit, because certainly the voltage across this would not actually trigger the starter. The, the way a starter works, when you first turn a fluorescent tube on, because the tube's not lit, you pretty much get full mains voltage across the starter uh, via little filaments that have not been the traditional tube. And that voltage causes the gas to conduct, and the gas conducts, and it causes a little bimetallic strip to bend, shorts it out, heats those filaments up, um, making them emit electrons, and then the when the starter opens again, if they're hot enough, if they've lowered the voltage of the tube, it lights it. In this case, they've got these a resistor to each pin. That might also be because it's just to allow for the fact that sometimes they're wired differently, because it doesn't matter which of these pairs are wired. It, there's sort of two pairs a pair either side going to either side of the tube and it doesn't matter which of those two you put the starter across uh, there you couldn't put the starter across one end of the tube completely but uh, it doesn't matter if it's the outer or the inner of this circuit so they've probably just allowed for that by putting a resistor to each then comes a common mode suppression choke i'm guessing it's a little inductor that the wires are coming from the pins through the resistors and then they go from the end of those resistors they go to the bridge rectifier which is on the back and that converts the AC to DC then there's a smoothing capacitor to avoid ripple and flicker and it's rated 400 volts 5.6 microfarad I'll just write that in 5.6 microfarad 400 volt and the LEDs I was kind of expecting them to try and reduce the power of the fitting by having whereas the original tube might have had a voltage of say about 90 volts when it was struck I thought they might have aimed for a higher voltage of the LEDs to reduce the amount of current flowing through the whole circuit because that inductor um, is going to be rated to it, you can calculate it with the uh, inductive reactants based on 50 hertz and the value of the inductor it can you can equate it to a resistor value and that's kind of what they've done here so it's effectively limits the current through but i thought they might have gone for a higher voltage so that the current through the circuit was lower but in reality these four led panels are all wired in parallel the leds on them themselves are just standard three volt leds and they are 24 in each, so there's around about, assuming 3 volts each, which I measured across these and they did light at sort of 3 volts. My meter won't light uh, any more than one LED if you put a couple in series. But uh, so they are do appear to be 3 volt LEDs, although it's obvious that there's a, a double chip inside in parallel just to increase the power rating. So it adds up to about 72 volts um, across that, which is probably the equivalent of the original tube, but I suppose it might have, it will have a different uh, conduction characteristic from the tube, so maybe that's balanced to draw slightly less power. Although the rating of this light uh, is apparently 11 watt, and I think, and the original fitting it went in was probably rated for 16 watts. There is a slight difference. And fundamentally, that's it. I'd guess that one section of it would have gone out and then maybe another section as LEDs were, fail were failing with the overheating and overcurrent. And then ultimately, they'd have just all ended up failing in some section. And, well, all four sections would have failed and it would have gone out. I've not actually probed that with the meter to find out which LEDs failed. I will do that right now. One moment, please. Strangely... Every single LED checks out okay, although one was dim and others, although they've got two chips inside them, only one was lighting. I'm guessing maybe it was just that intermittent bond failure that sections started flashing. The other components all check out okay, although this resistor is kind of, its surface coating is cracked off, it is still measuring the correct value of resistance and the bridge wrecked fire checks out all right. So I'm guessing that it did that thing that, you know, the... LEDs just start flickering after a while. So that's it. Ultimately, it's good to know that if you get one of these lamps, you can put it into a fitting it's not intended for 
and contrary to what you might think that it's going to just run at lower power, it's actually going to get grilled if that fitting was designed for a higher current lamp. It also, it's interesting to see how simple these are. I guess that's the same as many of the linear fluorescent tubes that use the existing ballasts as well. It's worth mentioning that you do get the fluorescent tubes that just connect direct across the mains and you short out the ballasts. If you put something like this, if you've got a lamp like this that just ran directly off the mains with its own ballast inside, and you uh, shorted out the choke and the ballast and the light fitting to run that lamp, then putting this one in would result in this lamp failing instantly. Be these, that's probably why they've got these, to act like fuses and avoid any anything too dramatic. But there we go. It was interesting, particularly the way it's kind of gone a bit all brown and mottled as it's failed. And the construction is quite interesting too. Well worth taking apart.